Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform or you can go straight to my website at thereligioushippie.com. Welcome back everybody. SpongeBob's back. It's been a couple weeks since I've put out a real video. I've been kind of supplementing here or there with videos that I just had for subscribers. So now I'm trying to get back into a little bit of a routine of putting out some videos. And so this one's going Going to be about marrying consecration, specifically about what I'm going through at the moment. I'm almost finished with my Marian consecration and I'm doing the St. Maximilian Kolbe one, but I kind of wanted to explain to you guys what Marian consecration is, why it's really important, and just stuff like that. So that's basically what today's video is like. We are back in the corner where it all began. This is our temporary studio for now. So it's really good to kind of just be back in a cozy little corner and grab some hot tea and join me. And we do still have the original rocking chair in the background. So so yeah, I really just wanted to kind of talk about Marian consecration. It's something that I'm going through currently, and I think it's something that everybody should be doing, but a lot of people don't really understand it or know how to start a Marian consecration. It's really easy. Um, so I'm just trying to do a little bit of a beginner's guide here for anyone who doesn't understand while also throwing in my own experiences, because I think that's also very important. So first, let's start with the word consecrate. It means to dedicate. And so we are dedicated to God through our baptism. That is when God puts his stamp on our soul and we are his. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Now, a lot of people say Mary is not God. Completely true. Mary is not God. She is a creature. However, she is the mother of God and she is the highest of all creatures. She's also our mother. Jesus gave her to us on Calvary as he was dying on the cross. You can read that in John 19, 26. So when we're doing a Marian consecration, what we're actually doing is consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary. And understanding the importance that our lady really has in our lives, I think is summed up very well well through the Second Vatican Council. The Virgin Mary, who at the message of the angel received the word of God in her heart and in her body and gave life to the world, is acknowledged and honored as being truly the mother of God and the mother of the Redeemer, redeemed by reason of the merits of her son and united to him by a close and indissoluble tie. She is endowed with the high office and dignity of being the mother of the Son of God, by which account she is also the beloved daughter of the Father and the Temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants us to have a relationship with his mother because through Our Lady, we will be able to understand Jesus so much better. Not just that, but this is the woman who bore Jesus. She raised him. All of these things are so important. Nobody knows God like Our Lady knows God, and that's why Marian consecration is so important. Jesus entrusted himself to Our Lady, and we should follow suit in the same way through Marian consecration. Father Michael Gately states, Marian consecration Consecration basically means giving Mary permission, or as much permission as we can, to complete her motherly task in us, which is to form us into other Christs. So when you do a Marian consecration, what you end up doing is you entrust Our Lady with your prayers and sacrifices and works, then she can perfect them and offer them to God. She will also take our prayers and sufferings and everything and put them towards things that we don't even know need prayers. Um, I forget where I heard this example, but somebody said, oh, well, little Timmy's sick, but you don't know little Timmy's sick. And Our Lady takes care of little, little Timmy by giving him your prayers that might have gone towards something else, but had those prayers gone towards that other situation, it wouldn't have worked out properly or something like that. Our Lady knows because God allows her to know. And so through that, she is able to offer those things to Christ and she is able to perfect our imperfections. Wow, that's a lot of words. I did my first Marian consecration back in 2020, October. That's when it ended because you end the consecration on a Marian feast day. And I remember I always did the 33 days to morning glory. I've renewed my Marian consecration almost every single year. And, you know, as I continued doing the 33 days to morning glory, I really appreciated it. But I started growing a lot in my faith life. And as I started growing more in my faith life, I started realizing that I wanted a deeper devotion to Jesus. And what better way to do that than through his mother? His mother knows him best. So I was like, you know what? I think I want to try a different Marian consecration, but I wasn't really sure. And I try a bunch of different consecrations and I kind of, 
I don't want to say I grew out of the 33 days to morning glory consecration. I just wasn't getting much out of it anymore because I continuously did that one. And I wanted something that was more of a challenge, something to deepen my relationship with Our Lady. And that's when I heard about Gabriel from Gabby After Hours, who is a friend of mine. I absolutely love Gabby. What a beautiful beautiful soul he is and he's helped me more than he really knows and i saw he was doing a series of a marian devotion from saint maximilian kolbe so it was the marian consecration but it's saint maximilian kolbe's version and i thought that was really interesting because when i generated a random saint for the saint of the year i got saint maximilian kolbe in january so this was kind of like providential i was like oh my goodness i definitely have to do this now like I can't not do it. And my fiance ended up doing it while Gabby was doing the series. I didn't, I hopped on the bandwagon a little too late. I was like, there's no way I can catch up now. And that was completely true. At that time, I could not catch up. I really tried, but they were on like day 10 and I was like, I, I can't do it. <laughs> but it really helped Max deepen his faith life and his devotion to Our Lady and Jesus. And so that's it kind of inspired me to do it myself. You know, I think that that's really important that you're in that your relationship inspires things like this. So when I saw him grow in devotion and everything, I was like, oh, I have to try this for myself, you know? And I saw that because of Holy Week, the Annunciation was moved to April 8th, which is my birthday. And so I was like, I have to do this Marian consecration for my birthday. I just feel called to. I feel like it's providence. It's a sign. And to have the Annunciation moved to my birthday was just like, I have to do this consecration. So I decided to start it. And, you know, looking back, it's all in hindsight, but I mean, really God was preparing me for what was to come. And I think through grace and just intercession of Our Lady, she has really held my hand through all of this. And while I am trying to keep a lot of the family things private, Many of you already know by now that my dad was diagnosed with brain cancer a couple weeks ago, and we're taking it one day at a time. It's been a very difficult time for all of us. It was completely out of left field. We did not expect this at all. It's a very aggressive cancer, and we are counting our blessings and really just leaning into prayer. So the whole reason that I mention it is just because we desperately need your prayers. Please pray for my dad. Please pray for my family and myself. We just really need prayers right now. But truly, it was Providence that I started the consecration when I did. And since then, I am almost done. This is basically my last week. And I'm going to have to go back and reread some of the days because with everything going on, you know, uh, some of the readings were just a blur to me. And I'm like, I really want to make sure that I'm getting everything out of this consecration. So I'll definitely be doing it again next year. But I think I'm going to revisit some of the readings because I think there's some really important tidbits in there that I've forgotten or I was too tired and exhausted and I couldn't focus properly. And there were days where, you know, I had to catch up a couple days and things like that. Um, and people always ask me, what do they do when they're doing a Marian consecration and they miss like two or three days? Do they have to start over? Like what's the thing? You don't have to start over um, if you feel like you can catch up. Two or three days is not crazy. You know, you do the readings and then you do the prayers. But if you're like, far in advance and you can't catch up, I would just restart it at the next Marian feast day. Um, that tends to be what works best for people. But uh, if, you, if you're like, mm, I'd say over a week, I would restart. If you can catch up on seven readings, I feel like that's not too bad. But a lot of people, you know, if they go past the three, like if they miss like three or four days, they usually restart just because it's easier for them. But there's nothing wrong with persevering and reading, you know, seven days worth of the book and doing the prayers. And during this time of consecrating myself to Jesus through Mary, I have felt such a deeper devotion to Our Lady, but also to Jesus, because now I feel like I understand him so much better. And it's crazy to me how my prayer life's gotten better, my trust in God has gotten better, and overall just the amounts of positivity towards my spiritual life and prayer life, it's just increased. So if you're looking to do a Marian consecration, it's probably either because you don't have a relationship with Our Lady at all and you want to deepen it, 
or you have a relationship with her, but you feel like you want to go a little deeper. That's kind of where I was. You want to learn more about Jesus and understand him better and get closer to him through Our Lady. So I've done the 33 days to morning glory consecration probably, I want to say it was about three times. And I do believe that that's one of the best Marian consecration books for beginners. However, I don't think the St. Maximilian Kolbe's version of Marian consecration is for advanced people either. I just think they're very different. Um, but I prefer St. Maximilian Kolbe's version. That's just me personally, makes because I've done the 33 days too much. Um, and I'm just kind of quoting it word by word. Like I already know all that stuff. And so it's something new and something exciting. Either way, both are amazing. Um, but I know the 33 days to morning glory is usually the most common one, but I highly suggest if you've done that one and you're looking for something different to kind of spice it up, definitely, definitely suggest the St. Maximilian Colbe version. So you order the book and I will put links to them below in the description so you guys can choose which ones you want to do. But basically from there, it's about the same. You get the book and then in the front of the book, you will see a little column with start dates and end dates kind of thing going on. Um, so then you can decide when to start and end the Marian consecration. Now, I was talking to my priest friend and he said that if there was a Marian feast day that wasn't really well known, there's like a Marian feast day every day. So if there's a Marian feast day that's not as well known, but you have a specific devotion to her or something like that, just count back 33 days from that feast day and then you can start the consecration from there. If it ends on a Marian feast day, you're good to go. So once you pick a day to start your Marian consecration, you just have to wait for that day to roll around and then you start the readings. And it's one reading a day and usually it's prayers. There's some prayers at the end of it. They're not very long. Honestly, altogether, the consecration itself could take five minutes or less depending on how much time you have. Uh, the readings aren't very long. I try to take my time with them though because I think it's really important that we're intentional with our prayer lives and we're not just rushing through it. We're not just trying to get through it because it's one more thing to check off our to-do list. We should actually want to do these things even if we don't feel like it. We should still fake it till we make it basically. You know, we want to still push ourselves to try to do better and to, you know, want to have this relationship, even if we don't feel like it. And then at the end of the 33 days on the Marian feast day, you can go to a church or a chapel and there's going to be a consecration prayer that you pray. You can of course do this in the privacy of your own home, but I think it's more special when you get to go to a church and do it in front of like a statue of Our Lady and Jesus or something. I just think that's really special and um, I personally love doing it that way. But of course, if you don't have access to a church or anything like that, you work, whatever, you can totally do it at home in front of like an image of Our Lady or something like that. So yeah, honestly, it's, it's pretty simple, but oh, I want to give just a word of caution, of warning, not to scare anybody. However, the devil hates Our Lady, hates her, like he despises her. And if any of you guys listen to Father Ripperger, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So because of that, he will do everything in his power, the devil, not Father Ripperger, um, to keep you from doing this consecration. Because when you are put in Our Lady's hands, the devil is scared. That is a battle he cannot win between a mother and her child. Rest in peace. When you are close to Mary, you are close to Jesus, and the devil fears that because if you are no longer in his grasp, then he loses. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. I know that was a little informal. It wasn't very like, oh, factual and everything. I'm kind of getting back into like my chit chatty videos where I just kind of talk with you guys and I make it more personable and more homey. And now that I'm back in my own little corner, <laughs> Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella reference, I really just want to reconnect with you guys. You know, I, I want to make sure that you guys are taken care of spiritually and it's not all about the bells and whistles. Um, and so I apologize apologize for, you know, the very bland background and everything, but at the same time, spreading this devotion to uh, um, Our Lady and to Jesus is more important to me than what my background looks like and being able to share these experiences with you guys and what's going on, I think in the long run is just going to be 
a better connection. You know, we're going to have a better connection that way. And I really want to get back to my roots in that sense where we're back in my corner and we're having chit chats and we're just rambling about stuff. Um, of course, there were, there will still be factual videos because I think those are really important as well. But they're going to kind of look like my old videos again, uh, just a little less cringy. Anyways, don't forget to check out my website at thereligioushippie.com. I have a podcast called A Catholic's Perspective, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Bye, guys. <laughs>